this work, and I use a three-panel comic strip to do that. I'm going to show that to you guys right now. Um, I just drew this, so even for my standards, this is pretty terrible. I just like had like two minutes to draw it before um, we all sat down. So I'm going to show it to you right now. So this is um, well, the simplest comic in the world. You guys can see it here, up there. Okay. Good. And now there's nothing. All right. So. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's bring it right there. <laughs> sure. I'll let you. <laughs> we'll get up close and personal here with the simplest comic in the world. Or not. Uh, All right, why don't you just go ahead and describe yeah, it? Yeah, let us describe it. So, those of you who can't see, I'll bring it down a little closer. Um, it's three panels, a very simple story. Here's Dad, that's Junior. There's a football, it kind of looks like a pie, but I assure you it is in fact football. Dad's yelling, go long, they're in the park, there's grass. It's summer, there's the sun, dad throws a long bomb, junior runs down the field, dad makes the diving catch, touchdown, or junior makes the diving catch, dad's the only touchdown, hurry, arms in the air. So, three panels, a very simple story, but it is in fact every story. And when you're teaching cartooning, it isn't just cartooning, but as we saw up here before, it's storytelling too. And this is every story ever. Every story has three panels, three acts, three parts. Beginning, middle, end, first act, second act, third act. And every first act of every story ever has to answer five questions. Who is the story about? What is it about? Where does it take place? When does it take place? And why do we care? Um, so, the who, well, we know it's Dad and Junior because, well, here they are. The what? Well, they're playing football. The activity's clear. Um, we actually have, you know, arm cocked back, ready to throw. Junior's already sprinting, getting ready to sprint off and run. So we're kind of already into the story. The what is clear. The where is obvious. We've got uh, grass or in a backyard or a park. Um, you know, you can add more details if you have <laughs> more time um, to make that a little more clear. The when, summer, spring, sometime warm because they're out playing football. The sun's in the sky. Um, so answering, and then the why, uh, again, I forgot, but usually I put a jersey on these guys. Um, so we know that they like football, that football matters. And if football matters to dad, it matters to junior. And so this game of catch is important to these characters. The stakes aren't particularly high, but we've established that it does in fact matter. So we've answered the five questions. There's two more things the first act of any story has to have. One is typically a, what is, so what is the, the story about? Often it is in fact an object, a MacGuffin, as we call it. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the story MacGuffin is the football. What's going to happen to the football? How is the football's story arc going to be resolved? Um, and I often connect it to things like Star Wars or Harry Potter, where we talk about what are the MacGuffins of those stories the original Star Wars, the MacGuffin, the thing that everything revolves around and is about, the Death Star plans. Every single thing in the original Star Wars, every single main plot point is about the Death Star plans. Why does Darth Vader attack a ship? To have a ship apart, I want those plans. What does Princess Leia do? Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, our manly hope. As she gives it to R2-D2, shoots him down at Tatooine. They're found by Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker, because r 2 d is trying to phone him. Obi-Wan goes uh, after Obi-Wan, uh, the Empire kills his family, trying to find the Death Star plans. They then get with Han Solo, head off into space, end up on the Death Star, that's no moon. Uh, free the princess, because they have the Death Star plans, they can plan an attack on the Empire, but the Empire follows them back to the moon of Yavin. Um, there is a desperate dogfight, and because Luke has the Death Star plans and he uses the Force, uh, they are able to destroy the Death Star. Every single thing in Star Wars, the MacGuffin is the Death Star plans. And in this case, it's football. Something very clear, very obvious, very simple. Um, and uh, then we need an inciting incident. So every story, the beginning of every story has to have something that really kicks it into motion. 
And in this case, it's dad with his arm cocked back yelling, go long. The football is going to be thrown. We know the story is going to go into motion. Um, in panel two, we have our second act where there's complications. The ball's in the air, Junior's running down the field, anything can happen now, right? The ball, you know, we use the, the term, uh, the metaphor, the ball is in the air to describe a story that's kind of in motion, something that's uncertain. Here, literally, the ball is in the air. Um, and the second act has what we call the hero's journey in it. Every story has to have a journey of a character progressing from one place in his or her life to another. And again, here in this case, it's a literal journey. If Junior had stayed right where he was when Dad threw the ball, he couldn't have caught it, could he? He had to go on a journey to be where he needed to be, when he needed to be, to catch the ball. And every character in every story ever has to go on a journey to be who they need to be, when they need to be that person, to catch the ball, to rescue the princess, to blow up the Death Star. Every story ever. Um, and so in panel three, we've got Junior making the diving catch. It's a touchdown. And this is the third act where every story has to have these two things too. One's the climax and one's the denouement. And the climax is, of course, where we answer the question. We ask to hear what's going to happen to this football. In the third panel, we tell you Junior's going to catch the football. It's a happy ending. He's got great hands. He's going to be a wide receiver, um, you know, for the Giants one day. I don't know. Uh, and uh, we know that Dad is happy. The denouement, Dad's got his hands in the air yelling, touchdown, big smile on his face. The denouement tells us, well, what does it mean? We've answered the question, but what does it mean to our characters? And Dad's happy about it. He's excited. Got his hands in the air, touchdown. Again, going back to Star Wars, at the climax of Star Wars is the Death Star blowing up. The denouement is that scene right after where they're all getting their medals and everyone's a hero and Chewbacca doesn't get one and that's speciesist and I do not support that. Um, but, you know, everyone gets the medals, the John Williams score comes up. We know that the Rebellion's going to keep fighting the Empire, a big battle has been won, great stuff is happening, and that tells us how we should feel about all that. And then we're off, you know, to the end credits and hopefully into a good sequel. Um, so that's story. In three panels, you not only told a story, but in reality, you told every story. And when they're going to be doing any kind of creative act at all, whether it's cartooning, whether it's writing, they have to understand this structure. And we do a very poor job, in my opinion, of <coughs> teaching this in education. And this is a way that cartooning can literally make these very abstract, very kind of heavy concepts, especially for a, a younger person, very literally real. Um, and for any of you who do want to do cartooning workshops and do want to do stuff like this and want to completely rip this off, you're welcome to. Um, you can contact uh, us and me at readingwithpictures.org. That's our organization. There's a info of reading with pictures. We'll go to us. And for those of you who do want to do kind of like what I do with Phyllis, what John does, contact us and uh, we're going to be setting up potentially a, a, uh, a speakers bureau for cartoonists to start going into classrooms and sort of evangelize and spread the good word that is comics. Um, and what's that called again? Uh, Readingwithpictures.org. Or. Right. So thank you guys. Thank you. It's really interesting to me to see how other people uh, prioritize what goes in their cartooning classes. Um, I want to be sure we have a chance to hear from Steve uh, because he's doing some interesting stuff with digital. Steve, come on up and use this mic. Or uh, maybe. Thank you.